followed everything. So if you followed everything correctly, God bless, we are almost there, boys. We have our setup, right? Everything is going well. We have our setup. Let's actually dive into the... And this is going to be a similar setup for the bulk of these projects. Let's actually dive into writing some code right now. Um, so what we're trying to do is create a Git request. Now, Node.js and Express make it very easy to actually create your own Git request so that when we pass in our localhost 3000 and then we do, you know, whatever, in this case it's timestamp, uh, and these values, it should return a certain stuff. Now, what we want to do is want to set up our Git request. And if you're not familiar with it, that's fine. It's really easy. Um, Node makes it and Express makes it really good. So we have our app and all we have to do is call Git. We define the path that we want that to be. So let's say we call this date values and then we pass in a callback function that takes in uh, always the same three parameters, rec, rest, and next. So within here, when we hit, what we're basically saying right now is, and we'll put some comments in here, uh, git call to return uh, JSON uh, that filters, that formats natural and Unix state. This is basically where all our logic's going to go. We're doing a git call where when we go to localhost 3000 and slash date values, maybe, let me make sure I put a slash in there, it's going to go ahead and take in our parameters and it's going to return it. But let's let's make sure that this is working first. So console.log. And right here, we will console log um, correct URL. Or URL works. Let's do that. Just something simple. URL works. And I and this may be you're like, oh man, this should definitely work. I encourage everybody to do it. But notice that it didn't run right now. You're saying, oh, well, I thought this was gonna work. Well, that's where the postman comes in. So remember how we had, I was telling you to install Postman. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to localhost 3000. And then within here, we are going to pass in slash timestamp, because that's our URL path, slash um, date values. And now when we send it, uh, when we send it, let's see, where did I mess up? we should have gotten URL works. Whoops, sorry guys, had a little bit of a brain fart. So what we wanna get is our URL works here. So I actually messed up our, I put in the wrong file path. What we're trying to do here is saying localhost 3000, then the URL that we're concatenating here, which is slash date value. So now when we, right now it's gonna continue sending indefinitely. Well, let's go ahead and close this script. Or it's going to time out eventually. And then we'll launch our node mon. And now when we go ahead and call our ph, uh, call our um, postman, and we send our request, you'll see the URL works. Now, the reason that this is continuing to send is because we don't have a return statement or anything like that, uh, which normally when you do a git call, you want it to return some a JSON value or return some value, which is what we're going to do. But now that we can see that it's working, we're going to actually start writing the logic. Now, this is where you transition from Node to essentially just JavaScript, just pure JavaScript, which at this point you should probably already be comfortable with. But uh, we'll go ahead and do that right now as well. So let me bring up this. Cool. Now, there's a couple things that we're going to work with here. First thing, let's go ahead and actually close this so this stops running and then reopen it. Now, the way that I did this was I checked if it was a number. And what we're going to, or what we're going to do rather, is uh, going to add on an optional parameter. So if you're not familiar with how params work, they're pretty cool. Um, it makes life pretty, pretty great. And let me pull, see if I can pull up my old calls here. So you're saying, how do we add params? So this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna just have, after our date values, have a slash that's gonna get some data and it's gonna do something with it. 
Now we're saying we don't know what that is yet or how we're going to do it, but that's how it works. So you'll see right here, I'm going to put a colon, and then I'm going to put some, a uh, parameter in there. In this case, uh, we're just going to use something like, um, we'll just use the word date. Um, date, date val. We'll use date val. So the value that we're going to pass in on our URL, we're just going to call it date val. And with date val, what we want to do is we want to get that request. We want to get that response. How do we do that? Well, uh, we're going to use params. So this is basically a parameter that we're passing in here. For now, let's go ahead and get rid of this. And we can return something in a second. And then we're going to let's launch our node server, which normally will keep this up um, with node mod. It's got update. We're gonna create a var date uh, date. We'll call it date val. So just get the value, right? Var date val, and this is gonna be equal to the rec. This is anything that's being passed in usually, and the rest is the res anything sending out. And next allows you to chain things together. But these two main ones are all we're gonna work with today. So the rec dot params, and then the name of the param. In this case, it's date val. And what do we want to do? We want to return our date val. How do we want to return it? We typically want to return it as a uh, JSON. So instead of return, what we're going to do is we're going to use rest or response. So this is a request. This is response. So we're going to use rest because this is essentially ret our return statement. It's going to return it in JSON form. We're returning a JSON object. And just now we're passing in a simple JSON object. So here um, we'll just put Unix for the time being, and we're going to pass in date val just to see that everything's working and saving. So we save that, and now it's not putting anything out because we haven't sent a request yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our date values here. This is a URL, and then we have our parameter here, which is the natural date. And when we hit send you'll see that we now get a response. Our response here is our JSON. And we're, we're as my, my boss would say, we are cooking with gas, all right? So <laughs> whatever the hell that means, all right? So we are send a response. This is our request. This is our, our rec, right? And we're setting the, par it's our parameter that we're now going to do something with that parameter. And then we set a response. Now it's just a matter of taking that and creating logic. So the first thing that I want to do is I like to set the, the um, we're gonna be using what's to local date string. And I think the easiest way, if this is something you're not familiar with, is to look it up, right? Let me show you the documentation and we will just look at it for about a quick 30 seconds to kind of give you an idea of how it works. So if you don't want to install an external resource like moment.js, which I didn't, you can use uh, formatting in uh, called to local date string, to local time string, and pass in some options as above to format your string properly. So, and what language and stuff like that. So in the first example, we have just a date. Then we pass in these options, which are gonna format the date to what we want. And you can look at it here. Pretty, pretty intuitive, right? So you just pass in JSON, follow the example, and go from there. Uh, this is um, just to local date is all we're worried about. We don't care about the time right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a, a, um, an object that's going to format our date for later on. So we're going to have var date formatting options is what I called it. And this is going to be equal to an object. And we're going to have a year, which takes in the parameter numeric. And then we're going to have a month that takes in long, which basically means it prints it out um, the full word, prints the full word out. So that's long. And then we're going to have a day, which uh, we make it numeric as well. So we want the numeric value for the day. And this will be used. And we'll put some comments here. And uh, 
we'll put comments here gets the request data for date and then this also is options to be used uh, options for formatting date in natural state natural date view I don't know you can you can you can form it better but you get the idea now let's go ahead and instead of unix date val what we want to do here is we want to pass in uh, another parameter because all we're trying to return is a json object and we're going to return a variable called natural date that we're going to define right now but the, the where your real problem is going to come in in this is that your natural date <laughs> excuse me is always going it's it's gonna because we want a unix to come in and natural date and how we format each one of those is slightly different so we have to add some logic we have to add some if statement so we're gonna do an if and what we want to check is if it is a number meaning if it's a unix code right because december 15th blah 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 isn't a number but a unix number is so the first thing we're gonna do is is this not a number is nan that's what it checks for and what are we checking? We are simply checking date val, which is the value that we passed in. So if it is not a number, is true, we want to do a certain thing. We want to change the natural date and we want to change the Unix date that we're going to pass in here and which we haven't set yet. So here is our Unix date and natural date. So let's go ahead and define our first bit of logic. So we'll define a variable called natural date. And we're going to reset this value here just to new date. We want to turn it into a date. And we're going to pass in our date val object. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward so far. So if it is not a number, then it's our string value. And we want to go ahead and create a natural date here. Now, the next thing that we want to do is format that date with the options that we just defined above. So natural date is equal to natural date dot to local uh, date string and then we want to pass in that we want the at least I do the English US version and now all we do is pass in our date formatting options and this will have formatted our date we so we have our natural date it's gonna format it in the way that we want but now what we have to do is we have to define the Unix state because we only have one option right now. This is so it's basically going to be two. We're going to have our if and then we're going to have our else. But let's finish our if first. So we're going to have our Unix state is equal to a new date. And then we're going to pass in our date val. So we're taking our Unix state and we're converting it to um, a new date format. And then we want to get the time and divide by a thousand. And you're saying, Dylan, you are so smart. How do you know that? I didn't know that. I had to Google it just like everybody else will <laughs> that hasn't done this before. But basically my understanding is we're taking this time and we're getting it in, in milliseconds or seconds and then we're dividing it. We're basically just t turning our Unix number or taking our, our date value, our string, and we're converting it into Unix. And this is the formula to do it. So let's go ahead and now that we have this going and our server is updated, let's make sure that this is working. So when we do our send, you'll see now we, we already, we're already there. So we're like, all right, cool. So we're taking in us this string right here. And this is simple enough. It's just returning what we want it to. Um, and then we're, it's converting this correctly. So, all right, exciting. Everything's working. And uh, if we go ahead and check our application here we should get a similar number uh, mine's going to be slightly different because i'm doing to local time string but more or less it's the same thing uh, don't don't really sweat that too much it's and you'll see when we actually output this that it's going to work just fine now what we want to do now is when we pass in this number or this number rather because i can't copy that as our parameter we don't want it to fail. Right now, we get nothing. We're getting absolutely nothing because nothing goes into it. All our values are are janky. All our, <laughs> all our values are nothing. So what we need is instead to 
<coughs> because these 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 val variables aren't defined. They're only defined in if and else. So what we need is to instead go ahead and do the Unix version. So if it's not a string, we're going to do an else statement here. And we're just going to say var Unix state. And the reason that we're defining this twice is because since we define it in our if statement, it may not ever exist. Um, this is just better. This would be better to call this let than anything else um, with the new ES6 standards. So we have our uh, Unix date will be equal to our request. We'll set this equal to date val. So cool. And we're saying we need to now get our natural date. And since we have our Unix date, similar to how we divided by 1,000, if we wanted to do the reverse of that, we have to multiply by 1,000, right? So we have our natural date is equal to a new date. And we're going to pass in our date val. And we're going to times that by 1,000. And last but not least, what we need to do is we need to now convert our natural date. And we can go ahead and just copy that here, paste it in, save it. And our, our server has updated. Let's jump over to Postman. And now when we hit send, you'll see that we have our Unix date. And this is actually coming out a day before. I think this has to do with my local date time string. So that's what's throwing it off. Not a big deal. Um, but uh, we're off by one day. We could probably fix that down the road uh, to change this to Zulu. But this will get you your local date time string along with your Unix number. And that's it. We have completed the very first Node.js uh, API project, microservices. Uh, a lot of kind of sit setup, but at the end of the day, once you know how to do it, it's kind of just like regurgitating it. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'm going to continue on working on the backend certification. I hope you do too. As always, thank you for watching the videos and supporting the channel. If you want to join our Facebook group, you can, Kotech and Caffeine. The link is in the description below. And if you want to support me, you can at patreon.com slash codingtutorial360. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding boot camp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.